Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Hey, today we've got the whole beef tenderloin. We're gonna break it down. We're gonna go step by step, super easy. You do not, and I repeat, you do not have to be great with a knife or know how to do it to save money and come out with some great cuts of meat. All right, so here's a method behind the madness, really quick, okay? I've just taken the whole beef tenderloin out of the package. I've got a little paper towel, just kind of dabbing it, just kind of keeping it dry, okay? We have talked several times before about the price that we buy our beef. Uh, we've done a couple of videos in the past, over a year ago, and people are still commenting today, I can't believe you'll be able to find beef prices that cheap. Well, there's only certain times of the year that we are able to find it. And when we do find it, we're able to spend a little bit more money than what we should to be able to afford the beef in bulk. This year is no different. We just bought our beef, I'm gonna show this picture. As you can see, the beef is $6.79 a pound. Now that's obviously for the rib roast, but you could get three bone, four bone, and so basically what we do is buy the whole ribeye itself and then have our butcher cut it up in ribeyes that we enjoy. And then we'll have those, we'll have those throughout the year. Well, this is no different. This is the beef tenderloin. While we were there, my wife's father, does not like ribeye, he would prefer a filet. So we picked up a pack of filet and the filet was $27.99 per pound for two filets. The total cost of the package was $34.88 or something like that. This whole tenderloin was $101.18, okay? So I know that's a, a quite a bit of jump, but you're talking about two filets versus a whole filet plus scraps. So that's how we do it when the cost of beef, one, is on the rise, but two is how we save money in the long run. So what I wanna show you today is how we break down our tenderloin. And I wanna start off the video by saying, you absolutely do not have to watch the rest of the video. And you're gonna say, what's the point of doing YouTube? Because I don't wanna hear the comments about how bad of a butcher I am. I don't wanna hear the comments, you should have done this, 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 and this. The whole point of this video is to show the average person. You do not have to be scared of a tenderloin or any other cut of meat. We've got different knives here to show you that you don't have to have the best of the knife in the world. You don't have to have a $380 slicing knife. All you have to have is some basic knowledge, some basic skills, and we're gonna get you through it, okay? This is for the beginners. This is for the people that say, I've never done it. I don't wanna mess it up. I'm the same way. I don't like ruining my money either, but we're gonna show you step by step, okay? You guys okay. comfortable? You ready to go? All right, as anything would say, you gotta have a sharp knife. Now, I said it doesn't matter which knife. This is just our standard steak knife that we have in, what, eight or 12 of them in our little set. I've got a filet knife, I got a chef's knife, I got a nice slicer, okay? I've got a bowl for scraps that are gonna be basically non-edible. I've got another bowl for scraps that are gonna be used, you could use it to help um, fresh grind. You can use the fat to render out like tallow and use it for something else. Good fat. There's a difference between good fat and bad fat, or scraps and bad scraps. You can grind up the scraps and add them to ground beef. Right? Yes, and make the ground beef more flavorful. For you can take one of those ribeyes that we talk about that we get for sale all the time that we just showed at six seventy nine a pound. Take a pound of ground of, of um, a ribeye out, add some fillet scraps to it. I'm telling you, the fat content is incredible. So that's why I'm saying there's good and bad. And obviously, the third part is all the good pieces of meat. All right, so enough chit chat, let's get started. The basics, okay? I am not gonna use culinary terminology to describe this whole tenderloin because I want it to be for the basic person, okay? Let's just say you got the fat part, the skinny part, okay? That's obvious. The fat part can separate, and now what we have to do is start breaking a lot of this stuff down to get it more uniform and get a lot of the bad fat off, okay? So let's just say, I'm gonna just say for and giggles. You guys can fill in the rest. I'm going to use my, what is it, steak knife. So basically, the reason why I'm showing you this is because, like I said, it does not matter what kind of knife you have, okay? Don't be scared of it. This is good fat. I'm going to show my wife this because she will not know. You see how nice and fleshy and, like, hard this is? This is good fat, okay? The string stuff that I'm pulling the fat off is typically bad fat. You see how it's stringy? You guys wouldn't want to eat that. 
Can you guys see the difference? Can you see that? No, I cannot see the difference. You see how you can't pull that? Oh yeah. That's bad. You Isn't wouldn't that want that called like sinew or, or no? A little bit of it, yes. But they're like I'm saying, so this fat right here is crumbly. This is very, very good fat. So we're gonna work our way through. So what I'm doing right now is just basically just taking a good eyeball, trying to pick up some of this. Uh, this is the silver skin right here. We're gonna get to that in a second. Basically, I'm just cutting the excess fat off. Not excess, the excess. And I can show you again. It looks like it's almost like peeling away. It does. It's very, very, very easy, okay? So basically what you do with a knife is you let the knife do the work, okay? You don't want to be digging into the meat. You want the meat, the knife to slide along the fat and the meat at the same time. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on it. Just let the knife do its work, okay? Same thing with this. Tear that nice chunk off. That's good fat. And this right here is pretty skinny, as I call it. You know, see how hard it is? So we're going to put that in the bad pile. Okay? And what you're trying to do is just come up with uniform pieces. There's a couple sections in here that I'm going to show you. This whole tenderloin is based off of, uh, I call them like veins. They're not necessarily veins. What would you, like rivers or sections. Okay? This is no different. Good and bad. Okay, just let the knife do the work. If you don't feel comfortable cutting towards yourself, you can always cut away from yourself. Some people prefer that. But just go slow, find the meat, and separate the fat from the meat. Now, why are you separating that big old chunk? Well, this is called the chain, okay? They all have got it. Depends on how far it runs up. A lot of people will throw this away because it's not worth their time. We're going to go over this in a little bit. Um, but this is called the chain. This is the culinary term, the chain. It's got large chunks of fat. You cut this off. But this is what I would use for the burger grind. See, that right there is very good fat. Plus, it's packed with flavor for the beef. So we're set that over there. I'm gonna dissect that in a second. Okay. So what you're doing here, this is a good point of view. I'm gonna switch my knife a little bit. The knives does not matter, okay? It's all about the person. You just get comfortable. The reason why I showed the knives is because I want the person at home to feel comfortable with whatever size of knife or knife they choose. When you see it online all the time, there's always people with like these great knives and you know they're sharpening steel and all that stuff. And I think sometimes it could be intimidating especially from the response I get for a lot of people on the flat top grill. It's the basic questions. It's just the simplicity that it can be. So as long as you feel comfortable with a knife, then that's when you go forward. So you can see how tender this is right here. You can see this right here gets a little bit tougher. I actually prefer the beef. Some, I mean, I actually prefer the fat. Some people don't. So we're just going to slice a thin part off. We are not scared to have fat on our fillets at all, around it, in it, or anything else, all right? So, here's another part of the filet that everybody's got, depending on what size of filet it is, what size of cow it is, and all that stuff, depends on how big this part is here. Some people want to keep it on, some people will take it off and make a, a smash style filet. However you butcher your filet is really up to you. As long as you're doing it, and you're happy with the results, nobody's gonna care. Nobody's gonna come to your house and say, 
I want an eight ounce fillet and you gave him a 10 ounce fillet or you, you made it and, and one piece is even and one piece is uneven. That's not what this is about. This is about breaking it down the easiest way possible, okay? Without tearing up the meat. So basically what I'm doing is finding those large pockets of fat. That's a good, that's a good chunk of fat right there. See how hard it is? So now what we're doing is just opening up for the silver skin. This is the non-edible part of the filet. You have it on pork tenderloins and stuff like that. So this is called, the culinary term is what? Sinew, whatever. S I don't know how to say yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know how to say it either. <laughs> I can't speak regular English, much less tenderloin English. All right, so here is a trick, okay? I'm going to do it with a chef's knife to show people that you don't have to have the best knife in the world. There is a trick to it, okay? The sinew is very, 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 very tough. It's unedible. So, but what you wanna do is, is take your knife blade and get underneath it without tearing up your meat. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Okay. You can cut against the sinew, which will allow the meat to release from the, from the sinew without carving into the meat, okay? So what we're gonna do, use our hands, make a small incision, I'm trying to cut, slice it so you guys can see it. I'm just letting the knife do the work, okay? Not very deep cut at all. And what you wanna do, work your, work your way around the tail and start pulling. Well, that came right off. You never <laughs> see that. It won't be that easy, I promise, see? So just take your knife tip. You're only talking about that much of the knife. Don't worry about the rest of this, okay? This is what you're trying to control. It might seem like this part is tedious, but this is the part that you really want to pay attention to. And and you would can, you rather pay $12 a pound for a filet or $30 a pound? Correct. Plus you get all the scraps and I love the scraps. We've done several videos with leftover beef scraps, our steak carnata, or um, not carnitas, steak uh, tacos was leftover filet. All right, so one more time. So the knife tip, here, we'll even use a steak knife to show you that yes, it can be done. It's all about getting underneath that silver skin. Okay, so just run your knife under it. I don't know if you can see that, can you see it? Mm -hmm. Is that better? So just run your knife under it. Get behind it. Same thing, so just you're trying not to carve into the meat. This is where you could waste a lot of meat if you're not careful, okay? And what you wanna do is when you lift up on the skin is put your knife right on it. It's almost like the idea of the perfect Christmas wrapper scissor cut. Does that make sense? Where you hit it right at the right thing and it doesn't cut the paper or anything. Same thing with this. See how nice and even that meat is? Take your knife blade, get underneath it. Don't worry about small sections. You don't have to cut the whole thing at once. My knife blade is actually facing up. You see that? And I'm letting the silver skin be the thing that I'm cutting against. And it does trickle down into that fat part of the filet. Same thing. There we go. Come back in here, and this is so your filet was like this, right? So we keep opening up. That's why some people detach this. I have no idea what we're gonna do yet. We're just gonna see what it naturally happens with the with the beef. Sometimes the this fat is so fatty inside that it just naturally comes off. I think we're gonna keep it and cut just larger steaks. So we'll see what happens. All right. 
Now that that's done, I'm gonna show you right here. Now that that's done, see how pretty that is? That's how you get that. This is called the Chateau Briand, about right through there. This is like the prom of the prom of the prom. Why? Because these pieces right here are uniform. Once you get to the tail, you can bunch it up. You can cut it and smash it. I guess you could like bacon wrap it. The whole thing? Oh yeah. Like There's, the tail, you could bacon wrap the tail because then you don't The options notice. are endless. You can do whatever you want to. You can stew the meat if you want to, but we like the fat. So I'm not gonna sit here and carve a bunch of the fat off. The rest of the fat is pretty edible. You might get a couple bites here and there, but we actually like the fat because like a lot of people say, fat is- Flavor. Exactly. All right. So, with that being said, okay, what people would do is they would cut this off and make this a little bit flatter. Since we like the idea of scraps, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off just right through there, okay? So now we got two pieces separated from the tenderloin. Some people will cut the tenderloin in half and flip this tail over, and then it's more even piece. You see how thin this is? versus how fat this is. So you can imagine it would cook unevenly. We do it a little bit different. Okay. What we're going to do is cut it to about right here, completely off. Now, what some restaurants will do is take this, smash it and wrap it, and that's how they get a, a six or eight ounce filet. It'll look a lot prettier than that, but that's what we used to do. Okay. But we're going to save that for scraps. All right, so now that our filet is pretty much done, whatever you want to do it from now on is up to you. If you want this whole thing to be jerky, be jerky. If you want the whole thing to be steaks, be steaks. Um, let's see, we haven't used this knife, I don't know. This is my filet knife. Typically, the fatter the filet is, the skinnier your cut will be because that's a traditional eight to 10 ounce filet, right? If it's skinny, you have to go a little bit wider it, the fat part of it's going to go a little bit narrower. So that's why there's going to be different sizes. But all together, we're going to try to keep it the same ounces, which is basically what I eat. So fatten it up a little bit. See what I did there? Instead of having it long and skinny and trying to cut it way out here, go ahead and pat it up a little bit because it's going to make it a little bit fatter. What do you think about right there? However many steaks we get out of this is our personal benefit. I'm not worried about food cost or portion control. I'm not worried about each filet getting eight steaks, eight to 10 steaks out of it because it's ours. That's why I wanted to come to the beginner part of it. This is not no professionalism style butchery. I don't cut 800 of these a week, but I'm just telling you that when you go to the grocery store, don't be scared of it. Okay. See, it's getting thicker, right? So I'm gonna narrow it down just a hair. Now, one benefit when you're cutting these steaks is I personally err on the side of thicker, even though it's more money, than I do thinner because that allows you to get that really good sear on the outside without overcooking the inside. The thicker the steak is, the longer it can sear on one side and get that really good crust, okay? Good time to mention you have a video about how to cook a filet in a cast iron skillet. Probably is a good time. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> when you edit this video, you can tell them. All right. So now that we're getting narrower, I'm gonna go a little bit, a little bit wider. If you've ever been to a restaurant and you notice they'll say like two, three ounce filets. Or they'll say like, uh, they'll do like beef tips or they'll say like tornado of beef or something like that. That's what this is. They can take this beef right here. See, smash it down on this side, give you a presentation side, put butcher twine around it. Then all of a sudden you've got a, a tail meat that looks pretty reasonable. Make sense? All right, two, four, six, eight, ten. Not bad. Ten fillets out of this. Very thick. We could probably got 12 if we really wanted to watch the ounces. But like I said, I like a thicker fillet. All right. This is gonna be done the same way, scraps. I just wanted to go over this real quick. So 
So this is the chain. Yes, don't be scared of the silver skin in this. There's a couple different ways. Some people flay it like a fish, but if you're brand new to this, to like using knives and worry about butchering and all that, we're not gonna get to that part. So, I wanted, there's so much skin and so much fat in here, I feel like a lot of people would be wanting to throw it away. And we're not gonna do that. So I'm just gonna cut off the good parts of the fat and save those, which are those big chunks. Okay. You gotta see how mangled, and I call it veiny. I don't really know what the culinary term is. But see how there's many ribs in it? There's just so many different ways that this thing can open. Right there. There we go. Here we go. All right. So what I'm going to do is get behind this piece of skin, right? Right here. Just make a small incision. You don't want to cut all the way through. Just cut the skin. Okay. Use your knife and act like you're cutting the cutting board. Okay. Very thin strokes. There you go. That's bad skin. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this up in about one inch chunks, just like this, because I know this is gonna to go to my meat grinder. And this is what we're gonna to add to our ribeye to make the prime burger. Look at that piece of fat, I'm gonna keep it right in there. So you're gonna grind up ribeye and that. Oh yeah, we're gonna have one heck of a burger. Look at that right there. So that I'm gonna label that burger, okay? Now, when it comes to this, like I said, you can cut this and make another steak out of it if you smash it. You can cut just a little bit of the tip off and you can smash it, and right there is another beautiful steak. There's nothing wrong, wrong with it. You want a steak, or do you want fajitas? It's up to you, make the call. Uh, well, we have about 30 ribeyes in our freezer right now, so. Well, we can, we can we'll just keep them like that. We can, uh, we can uh, break them down later. Same thing with this, you can keep it whole, right? You can definitely trim off the edges. This has got a little silver skin. See the difference? You see that right there? Yep. We're just gonna come back in it. Uh, let's see here, let me cut this way. Probably can't see it, can you? It's hard for me to cut against myself. Same thing, just get underneath it, slide right down the meat. The biggest thing is you don't want to, uh, here, here's the biggest thing. When you're trimming your, your filet and you're worried about wasted meat, always remember to try to cut up. If you start cutting down in the meat, that's where you get too, uh, too deep in the meat and you'll start scarring it and that's how you lose a lot of meat. If you just go slow and have a good sharp knife and feel comfortable with it. All right, some people will cut these tips off right here and you can use this for like um, um, anything you want to, like fajitas, uh, like I said, beef tips. What's the thing when you have the uh, the mushroom reduction in the puff pastry with mustard, Dijon mustard? Beef Wellington? <sighs> yes, beef Wellington. Yeah, this is a great... Some people use a Chateaubriand, the middle part of the filet, but this is a good way to do an individual like party of two was what the, what we used to call them. Get them done, like trim them up on the... Make them nice and even and make a, a beef Wellington out of this and it, do it basically party of two. But we're gonna keep this whole like this and then freeze it just like this. And then whatever we determine, we'll just put it on the package and um, right, on the right on the package what it is. So I know when we thaw it out and then whatever we wanna do with it from there, whether it be steaks, fajitas, whatever, we can do that from there. All right, all right. We've got good fat that we're gonna save. I'm gonna freeze that. If you guys want to make beef stock and keep your trimmings and all that, you're more than welcome. So out of that whole filet, this is the only part that's getting thrown away. And yes. that's probably, what, one pound? No, I think way less. I got to be... Three-quarter pound? Half well, pound? probably. Probably three-quarter of a pound. Yeah. Maybe a pound. So that's good fat. We're going to eat all this right here. And then all this is extra. All right. All right. Last but not least, let's see how we vacuum seal these and save them and put them in the freezer. All right, so this is my food saver. Um, I really swear by these things. Uh, we'll put a link in the description below. This is the uh, the off-brand style um, plastic just because they do get kind of pricey. But what I do, show you guys real quick. 
So there's my paper. Seal it. Once that's done, this bottom side is going to be sealed. And then we'll stuff it full of whatever you want to do, and I'll show you how we label it. All right, see how it's sealed? Okay. So we're going to turn it over. We do two fillets per package. The kids really don't eat, uh, not a lot of marbling in these things. Uh, the kids really don't eat fillets. You always want to go a little bit more than what you think that you would need because it does take a little bit of more space. Do it per the package instructions. We're gonna press vac and seal. Wait till the Christmas lights go off. There you go, freshly sealed fillets, and we'll just put on there, uh, let's see, um, 1221, just like that. So then that way when we go to the freezer, we know what we're getting out. If I had the scraps, I would put fillet scraps, I would put, you know, something like that, ribeye, pork, it doesn't matter, but that's a good way. You just put all these in the freezer, and anytime you guys want steak, there it is, $12.99 a pound, good to go. All right, guys, so there you go. Hey, that's seven and a half dinners. That's going to be for my uh, wife's dad coming in town pretty soon. So we did the quick math. Uh, like I said, it was like $101, and like one dollars, seven and a half dinners. What is that, 13 $13.46. Okay, thirteen forty six. So fillet basically, if you break it down, fillet dinner for two. So if you break down that per person, $6.75, $6.80 per person. I don't know if there's a restaurant in the world that would sell you an eight to 10 ounce filet for that price. That's why it's important to break down your stuff. Now, with that being said, I know it's a long video, but I'm gonna do the same thing with this pork chop. We're not gonna video that, but it's the same thing, same idea. Break it down by the bones. This was $1.99 a pound. And so from there, it's the same thing. We're vacuum seal it. And then all of a sudden we got pork chops in the freezer whenever we wanna do a good pork chop. I'll have the link in the description for this below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Do not be scared to buy a big chunk of meat and break it down no matter what it looks like. Thanks for watching. Peace.